This is one of the first enemies that you'll come across in Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. But did you know there's a secret way to defeat it? And all you have to do is sneak up onto its hand, where it will throw you up on its belly and you can grab all of its loot. And that's just one of the nine essential tips I've gathered for you, whether you're a new Zelda player or a seasoned veteran. But anyway, when walking away from this enemy, just make sure not to be too loud on your way out. Horses have always been one of my favorite modes of transportation in any Zelda game, and Tears of the Kingdom is no exception to that. One secret is that you can feed them a handful of apples to max out its bond right away. And boy, I really wish I knew this sooner. See, when you get a horse, its bond level is really low, and you have to almost constantly calm it down. So being able to get this bond set up right away is just so, so useful. And one more thing is that the horses you should be looking out for the most are the ones with the solid color to them, as well as not having any spots. Horses with spots are more docile and easy to get. But let me tell you about one thing, some of the better horses are kind of hard to get at the start of the game, so opting for some of the more docile horses may be a good idea. And one final thing is that in the back of the stables, there will be recipes that you can try out, which could end up being very useful to you. Now let me tell you, horses are definitely one of my favorite parts about this game, but I really recommend branching out and using new Zonai technology to help you along the way, because you can do so many creative things with it. Time for something pretty simple, okay? Let's talk about climbing. Now there's an unspoken rule about climbing. But before I show you that, let's come up this mountain real quick. All right, uh, I did not expect this to go for this long. All right, this is actually really long. <laughs> okay, now I'm not even in the same game anymore. I'll take a 10 beast chicken nugget, uh, medium fry. Now I'm in the matrix. And here we go, we finally made it. Now the purpose of this was to show you the stamina bar. Now, if you're about to run out of stamina, you can do a quick jump right at the end. And that pretty frequently gets me a boost that'll get me to the top of a place that I need to go. But wait, there's more. So let me show you something. When you jump off a ledge like this and pull out your bow, time slows down, which allows you to aim your bow easier. Now people call this bullet time, but there's a secret about it that many people didn't catch. In Breath of the Wild, the stamina wheel constantly drains, but in Tears of the Kingdom, stamina only goes down when you shoot your arrow. And here's what it looks like side by side. Special thanks to the Bread Pirate for sharing this fact with me. But anyway, shooting a bow and managing stamina can be exhausting work. So what better way to refuel than by cooking some hearty meals? Let me tell you, one of the best parts about Tears of the Kingdom is that inventory inventory stores all of your recipes. So all you gotta do is go to your inventory and then just press X and boom, you got all the recipes that you've made. So we've talked about the convenience of the new recipe storage system, but here's something even more appetizing. It appears that Link's cooking skills get an interesting boost during blood moons. Let's stir up some details on this. So beginning at 1130 on a blood moon night, you can get critical successes when you cook. But Ghost Rooster, what does that even mean? Well, that means you can get three extra hearts, an extra yellow heart, an extra two fifth stamina wheel, an extra yellow stamina wheel. Effect duration increased. Effect is raised one level. Did you get all that? All right, good. Keep in mind that there may be more now since those benefits were just from Breath of the Wild. Speaking of Breath of the Wild, let's talk about the story, and this part will be spoiler free. Now, if you're completely new to the Zelda franchise, you may be intimidated at first, or even if you're a Zelda veteran like me, this timeline can just get so confusing. But trust me, anyone from kids to adults will be able to get things figured out. As mentioned in a recent developer interview, they designed this game so new players will be able to understand it. There's also a character profile feature, and you can use this to understand the relationships between different characters. One thing I recommend to do is look for a recap video of Breath of the Wild if you have time, as it will definitely help you understand the story better. But let me tell you, the Zelda community is full of crazy people, and I love it. You can watch theories for hundreds of hours on end, and the best part is that the Zelda team designs their games in a way that rewards people for doing that. For example, at the beginning of the game when you first find out about the Zonai, I guarantee casual players do not know anything about them, but there have been hints in previous games that only Zelda theorists will understand. Wow, I really sound like a nerd right now. But anyway, I highly encourage you to seek out some of these theory videos for Tears of the Kingdom. And who knows, you may be able to find out hints for the next Zelda game. But going back to Tears of the Kingdom, let's talk about the abilities for a second. My biggest tip here is to mentally check in with yourself every once in a while to see if you are actually using these abilities. I very frequently found myself just forgetting about some of these in my playthrough, specifically the recall ability. This can be extremely useful when you have an item flying away from you, like a hot air balloon for example, and this ability can be incredibly useful during the shrine quest as well, so I highly recommend making sure that you are using it to its fullest potential. This can also go for the ascend ability. I have found myself so many times climbing up a mountain or something and being like, I could have used the ascend ability this entire time. Oh, and if you're worried about not understanding how to use these abilities, this game has ways of teaching you. Just give it time and you'll figure out how to do some incredible things. Or you can just make something like this that I just found on Twitter. This next tip is a huge quality of life one, so fuse is one of the most important abilities in this 
this game. You can fuse two spears together to make something insanely long. You can put an eyeball on your arrow to essentially give you aimbot, and you can even attach a minecart to your own weapon. How amazing is that? But when you want to find a material that is powerful to fuse with, make sure to sort by fuse attack power. This has saved me so much time and energy. But also make sure to experiment, because even though some items may be less powerful, there are so many secret abilities for each of them. And that's just one reason why I love this new addition. It really makes killing enemies so much more worthwhile in my opinion, and it just encourages so much creativity. But also, make sure to find items scattered around the map to fuse your item to, like the minecart one I was talking about. There are objects everywhere that you can try, so make sure to keep it in the back of your mind. Alright, I really have to bring this up. Isn't there like 35 Zelda amiibo now or something crazy like that? The reason I bring this up is because this game has certain paragliders locked behind amiibo, and it's impossible to get these items if you don't have the amiibo. Of course, they are just cosmetic items, but I would literally die to get the Majora's Mask Glider, okay? But while I am definitely not encouraging it, there are other ways to get amiibo items. Now, I will not be sharing these with you directly, but if you do your research, you will be able to find your ways. I know that a lot of people aren't even aware these amazing amiibo items exist, so I wanted to point this out to you in case you are a completionist. So one last tip, and this is the most important one. Take your time with this game. When you're playing, there is a very obvious main story that you can follow, but I highly encourage you to stray along the path. Explore every nook and cranny you can, because this really is a once in a lifetime game. When I first played Breath of the Wild, I went through it pretty casually, but I never stopped to appreciate all the super small details in my first playthrough, but that was a huge mistake. I eventually spent the next couple years finding new things every single day online. Take your time and go deep into the underground. Getting lost in it is really part of the fun. This really is one of the biggest games of all time, but the Zelda team puts in more effort than you may expect into crafting their games. In Breath of the Wild, there were so many things being found like five to six years later, and it will definitely be the same with this game. Now, if you're someone who doesn't have enough time to do every single thing, that's totally understandable. But my tip is to stop and take it all in, because this game really is an art piece. And hey, here's one final tip since you made it to the end of the video. So at the start of the game, there are these rails where you usually have to build something, but did you know that if you go on top, you can actually shield surf along them? I really wish I knew this. It's so useful. And one more tip with the shield, you can literally fuse it to a two-handed weapon, and that will allow you to use it while in a two-handed stance. It's pretty much the ultimate weapon in the game. Finally, make sure to fuse items to your shield as well, which can help create things like smoke bombs to kill enemies easier. I very frequently forget to fuse things to my shields, but it can actually be really useful during combat. Now, all these tips were shared during the Nintendo Treehouse Live, and it's pretty nice for people who are new to the game. But anyway, that's about all I've got, so thank you and good night. Okay, that's all the time I've got. I gotta get back to playing Animal Crossing New Leaf on my Nintendo 3DS.